Hi. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Sophie. I'm Emily McKibben. I'm the head of exhibitions and collections at Art Windsor Essex. Um, and this is my first round of uh, intake for uh, the Emerging Artist in Residence. So I'm excited to be helping out with that this year. Um, I also have with us Sophie. Uh, Sophie is also a staff member here and your point person online. If you do have any questions after the that come to your mind at 3 a.m. after today's session, uh, those can be emailed to Sophie. So do you want to say hi, Sophie? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Sophie Hinch. I'm the Education and Public Programs Coordinator. Um, and yes, if you have any questions either now during the webinar, feel free to put them in the Q&A or in the chat. Uh, we'll be fielding some of those questions, um, but I'll also put my email in uh, the chat as well. So if you want to reach out afterwards, um, you're more than welcome to. And we also have Nicole here with us. Nicole is an architect, um, uh, uh, trained as an architecture and also works at a small architecture and design practice in Windsor. Nicole has done uh, quite a few small development projects here in Windsor, including um, bringing the dry goods building back to life, um, which she's been working with since 2017. Uh, so Nicole is a partner with us in this project with Dry Goods Gallery uh, and is serving on our jury as well. And we'll be talking a little bit later about um, what's really been successful uh, programming within the Dry Goods Gallery space uh, and giving us some valuable context there. Oh, and so we can go to our next slide, I think. Oh, no, Nicole, say hello. That would be really good. Hey, everyone. Okay, uh, we can switch over then to the next slide, I guess. Um, so Art Windsor Essex, um, we would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are located on Anishinaabe territory, which is the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, comprised of the... Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations. And today, the Anishinaabe of the Three Fires Confederacy are represented by Bekejwanong. And we want to state our respect for the ancestral and ongoing authority of Walpole Island First Nation over its territory. We know we're coming together virtually today, but we always want to remember that even virtually we are in place. Okay, so maybe the next one. So this is our second year of running this program and we're delighted to run it again. Um, we had three artists in residence last year. We're having two in residence this year. Our inaugural three were Maria Medaretta, Michael Khalil and Dante Breslin. And we're gonna be showing you some of their projects uh, as we go through um, the uh, presentation today, but we just wanted to honor the work that they've already done. So the call for submissions that we have for emerging artists in residence sort of respects the idea that uh, an artist can be emerging at any age. And so we're really looking for artists that are within the first 10 years of their artistic practice um, and those that are currently living in Windsor Essex. So it's a regional program for artists within the first 10 years of their practice, but really at any age. The applications are currently open. Uh, we will have those applications open until May 18th. Um, so that's Thursday, May 18th, um, so very shortly. So um, we're so grateful you came today. Ask any questions you might have, but feel free to continue asking questions as we move forward, and we'll, we'll have the presentation online. Um, so the call for submissions is pretty straightforward, um, and if you need any accommodations in filling it in or any assistance from us, please don't hesitate to contact us. But really what we're looking for is sort of basic information, your contact information, a short artist bio, a short artist statement, any links you might have to website or social media. If you don't use social media, that's just fine. Um, a high res headshot or portrait that we can use for advanced promotion uh, and five images of previous works and projects. In terms of your artist bio and artist statement, if you don't feel comfortable writing in full sentences and you want to get your point across quickly, point form is just fine as well. Um, so the first two questions really address how um, artists will use the studio and how artists are going to use the exhibition space at Dry Goods Gallery. Um, so for the studio, I'm going to pass it over to Sophie. And then once we get to exhibitions, we'll pass it over to Nicole. So Sophie, do you want to talk about uh, the studio space here at Art Windsor Essex? 
Yeah, definitely. So the studio space at Art Windsor Essex is probably my favorite space in the whole gallery. It is such a creative and welcoming space and we want to activate it as much as possible. So during your residency, you'll be able to activate the studio with your own practice. And what we really want to know um, is how are you going to use or how do you intend using the studio space, knowing that it's a space for exper experimentation, uh, trying new ideas, maybe expanding upon works that you've already created. So we really want to know how will you be spending your time at the gallery? And we have a few kind of question prompts to guide your response. Uh, so prompt number one, how will you be using the studio space to create new work? Or will you expand upon pre-existing works? So maybe reimagining a series that you've already created. The second prompt is, uh, will you be open to members of the public coming into the studio during um, our regular gallery hours and viewing your creative process? Um, will you welcome people in, answer questions, engage them um, in that kind of way, uh, knowing that our studio space is open to all and open to the public during our regular gallery hours as well. And then lastly, our uh, third prompt is, what does your personal studio practice look like? How do you like to work? Um, do you need bright lights? Do you need it <laughs> kind of dark? Um, do you like to put music on? Tell us how you work and how you use space to create work as well. Um, so we just want to get to know you a little bit. Um, but think about all of those things. Think about maybe the tools that you would like to use. Are you going to use our printmaking press? Are you going to do some painting, some beadwork? Um, so this question is is really just for us to get to know you a little bit better. And I think there is an image, if I'm not mistaken, here. I'll show an image of Maria Mirada, who um, created a mail art project uh, last year. She put out a call to the public, um, and I think she received if I'm not mistaken, over 200 submissions or so. Um, there's so many different submissions from across Windsor Essex, but also around the world. Um, and she created a station uh, inside the studio where folks could sit down and create a postcard. And we also had a little mailbox that you could leave your postcard in. So that's how she was collecting and activating the studio as well during her residency. All right, I think that's it for the studio space. Okay, and uh, Dry Goods Gallery. Um, so we want to just know a little bit about how you would use the unique features of the gallery. Um, it's a, just to give you a little bit of a background on the, the gallery space itself, it's, um, it's in, an old building uh, right on Drewlard Road, which is, you know, becoming a more a sort of um, revitalized uh, commercial district um, that probably most of you are somewhat familiar with. Um, Chance Coffee is right there in the same building, actually. Um, City Cyclery, um, Grand Cantinas, restaurants, other shops are opening down the street. Um, so it's getting to be a bit of a, like, somewhat busy walkable district in the city. And, um, this window is facing right onto the street. So it's it's an old um, commercial display window. The the store itself, the building itself used to be a dry goods shop, um, place that sold sort of common everyday necessities like uniforms, socks, things like that. Um, there was a, uh, so, so it was a store like that. There was also um, tailoring and seamstresses on the top level. Um, and the windows were specifically used for display of um, the goods that were sold on the store. Um, so on the coffee shop side, those have all been opened up, but on the one side, uh, there's this display window that's under sort of a deep overhang of the building. You'll see in some images, I think that we're gonna show you in a few minutes um, and, and facing the street. So they get lots of eyes on them. Um, people that, you know, 
maybe wouldn't normally be going into the gallery just just everyone everyone walking by in the street so it's a really really awesome space to sort of engage and connect with um the community outside of the gallery um it's it's about 14 feet long five feet deep and about six feet a little over six and a half feet um in height uh so it's it's sort of a long narrow space um which presents you know a, sort of a a good opportunity to not just hang something on the wall but use use the whole space um to create an installation um and something that you sort of consider looking at from standing back what's your approach from the street um and you know yeah not necessarily just hang something on the wall and and because it's open 24 hours visible to the street at night it has there are lights on during the day and at night but the light the the quality of the light changes throughout the day we get shadows throughout the day changing daylight and then of course the situation at night where it's dark and you have the spotlights um so there's a lot of opportunity to play with that sort of evolution throughout the day um so those are all things to consider um you know the context of the space and the physical aspects of the space um things to consider as you're preparing sort of you know your ideas about how you might use that and how you might describe that in your proposal um is your proposed exhibition site specific um it doesn't necessarily need to be but it makes sense to consider how you might tailor it at least to be somewhat site specific for this particular gallery um, window space and and you know the considerations that uh, that we went through and the fact that it will be visible on the street to everybody walking by um, which is pretty exciting and, um, yeah <laughs> I'm happy to answer any further questions on that and I know there's lots to consider there um, but it's an exciting opportunity and we're really excited to be able to show emerging artists work in the space. Thank you so much, Nicole. And I can kind of follow that up with some images of our past emerging artists. Uh, so this is Maria Medorada's um, installation that she created titled Grid Expansion. Um, so hanging things from the ceiling, but also on the wall and thinking about space um, in that way. We also have the installation by Michael Khalil titled Decay, uh, where they also hung works from the grid on the ceiling, but also made really nice use of the, the ground. Um, so covering it in a dark sand uh, with some sculptures, and uh, some hanging leaves on the ground as well. And here we see it kind of at night. Um, so just seeing it at different times of day is really helpful. Um, if you're in the area, if you're in Ford City, we encourage you to physically go see the space as well. That might stir some inspiration. We also have uh, Remembering Fire Prescribed Burn by Dante Breslin, uh, where they painted the back wall um, and actually created a mural with charcoal directly on the wall. So that's a different way of activating the space as well. Dante also used some glowing light bulbs that kind of resemble fire. Um, so that was really neat to see at night. It made people do like a double take. <laughs> um, walking by, you're like, oh no, there's a fire, but it's just a light bulb. Um, but really creating kind of a, a site-specific installation on the ground as well, using natural material and thinking about light as well. And then lastly, we also wanted to highlight an installation uh, that was curated by Julie Ray Tucker by the artist Zarina Mendoza, titled Witnessed in the Convex Mirror. Um, Nicole spoke about the history of the dry goods building, um, that it was a, kind of a, a general store. So here, Zarina is recreating a general store that is personal to her, her culture, and her heritage as well. So really filling it with objects and using light and different colors as well. So there's lots of different interpretations and use of space um, presented here.
And I think I'll continue because I feel like this is my part as well. <laughs> so I'll just keep it going. Um, as part of your residency, we are asking our emerging artists to also um, plan and deliver and lead three community engagement programs. And uh, there's many different options and ideas of things that you could possibly do. We've made a short little list here, but take this as like inspiration, as a starting point to really develop and expand your own ideas. So some of the options or the ideas that we've presented are an artist talk, uh, where you invite folks to learn a little bit more about your work. Um, maybe there's an interactive workshop. Maybe you have a skill that you want to share with others um, and we can do some sort of learning experience uh, for folks in our com community. Um, think about something for a specific audience as well. Maybe it's a workshop specifically for children and their parents. Um, maybe you are a writer or a poet and would love to write a visual essay that we publish um, on our online medium uh, platform. Um, so like a, a digital article. Um, maybe there's an open studio day where you, you invite folks into the studio and you create together and it's a learning moment. So those are just a few of the options that are um, that you could possibly do. And then kind of tied to the community engagement programs, we also are going to ask you in the application to tell us a little bit about your personal philosophy on community engagement. What does community engagement look like or mean to you? So working together with the community, um, what does that look like? So it's gonna be very personal. There's no right or wrong answer. We just wanna know, what does community engagement look like to you? And I think we have a few images, so I'll walk everyone through those. Um, so as part of his residency, Michael and uh, some of his friends um, created some activist posters that were posted around downtown Windsor as kind of an action um, and as a, a performance as, as well. So that was um, a program that Michael did. I also mentioned previously Maria Meterata's uh, postcard project, mail art project. So we had uh, some different drop-in workshops, um, some school visits as well that particip participated and contributed to this massive installation of mail art. So that could be a, another idea that you explore or expand on. We also had Michael activate the studio during Awe at Night, which is our monthly uh, late night gallery event where the gallery is open late from five to nine. Um, so folks could drop in. It was an open studio. Um, so there's different activities that you could participate in and um, Michael led that during Awe at Night. Michael also participated at Dropped on Droulard, uh, and we were really, really lucky. Our booth was right in front of Chance Coffee, right in front of the Dry Goods Gallery, and folks could meet Michael and also see their installation that was installed in the windows. Uh, we created a collaborative mural uh, using spray paint and, and uh, stencils as well. Um, and we created a little reel uh, for Instagram that got over 14,000 views. Um, so that was uh, part of Michael's residency as well. Another community art engagement. Uh, so yeah, to all that to say, there's a lot of different possibilities. Of course, we want you to um, feel comfortable in the programs that you lean. So maybe if you're a little bit more shy um, or don't like public speaking, maybe a visual essay is right for you. So really listen to yourself, <laughs> listen to what you're comfortable with and uh, think outside the box. We want programs that are engaging uh, to a wide variety of folks um, and something that is new and different and uh, innovative. Um, so yeah, I'll pass it back over to, uh, to Emily, or is this me again? Should I keep going? 
<laughs> yeah, you're welcome to talk about um, some of the video content that the uh, the former arts and artists and residents did because it's um, a bit intimidating on the on the on first glance. But I think um, they were able to do things that were uh, uh, easy and fun and easy to circulate. So why don't you chat about those? Absolutely. Uh, so as part of our residency program last year, all of our artists created a an educational video that had some sort of educational component. So Maria Medarada uh, led a workshop, a watercolor workshop that she filmed, edited, did some voiceovers, and it was published online on our YouTube channel. Uh, Michael Khalil also did a, an educational video about how to notice your environment and sketch your environment as well, and then use those sketches um, to create your own stencils. And then the stencils that he created during that video were then used at the Drop Down Droulard uh, Festival. So it was kind of a full circle moment to tie in all of the elements together. And finally, Dante Breslin created a video of them weaving a small little basket um, out of natural materials that they foraged uh, during one of their walks. Um, so it was a beautifully made video, um, and it's an instructional video that you can follow along, pause, and create your very own uh, little basket. Um, so we want you to think about what sort of digital content would you produce? Um, it could be maybe an Instagram video takeover or um, an Instagram live where you show folks your practice or your studio space. It could be an educational video as well. Maybe it's an art walk. Maybe it's a video process of you installing your work at the Dry Goods Gallery. Um, so there's lots of different options that you can explore, um, but just knowing that you would be responsible for the, the production, the editing, if there's voiceovers, how long is your video, or how short is your video. So just tell us a brief kind of outline of what you would like to do um, for your video content, knowing that it would be posted on our social media, um, and probably our YouTube channel as well. So think about the different platforms as well. Yeah, so we um, were able to offer two artists in residence um, for this year. And so we are asking that all candidates, all applicants uh, select the times that work for them in order of preference. So uh, the first is July, August, and September, um, with an exhibition from September to mid-November. There is some there is some flexibility in that uh, as well. Um, and then the second is September, October, and November, with the exhibition running from mid-November to mid-January. Um, so those are the sort of two main time slots. So um, if there's only one that works for you, just let us know. Uh, but either way, either way. Uh, just rank them by preference and we'll take that to, into account when we do the jurying. Um, so I believe that everyone on this call, so Sophie, Nicole, and myself are assisting with the jurying of this program. Uh, we're closing the applica applications on after the 18th and we'll be submitting um, the applications to our jury to review beforehand. So everyone will come to the conversation in early June with a strong understanding of everyone's practice. Um, the one thing we would say is that um, keep, keep the application as simple as possible. It's entirely fine to use straightforward language. There's no need for art speak. I know sometimes it feels like we need to we need to use art speak, but here you're encouraged not to. Um, if you're most comfortable with point form, point form is just fine. Um, and if you do need accommodations as you prepare your application, please do let us know because we're happy to provide those. The goal is just to understand uh, with as much clarity as possible uh, who you are and what you're proposing to do with us in the residency and for the exhibition. Um, this is a form that we share with our jury members, and so it does give you a sense of what we're looking for uh, when we review the applications. Um, 
really the first and foremost thing is, is are these ideas uh, clear, clearly communicated and complete? Um, are they innovative? Does it convey a sense of welcome to our public, both in the studio and in the community engagement side? Um, does it create a sense of curiosity amongst visitors within the studio and within the exhibition at Dry Goods? Um, are they are the are people using the studio in, with innovation? Are they presenting the exhibition in an innovative, innovative way? Um, so we're looking for creativity, ideas, um, and it's entirely fine if if you approach the application not entirely knowing what what your project will be, but just trying to give a sense of what your intentions uh, and your approach might be. I think that's just fine as well. We've built in lots of time to work with artists and residents to develop their exhibition proposal. Sophie is incredible at uh, developing community programming. So we will be resources uh, to the artists and residents so they don't need to come with um, a full plan, but more a kind of clear, clear sense of their approach and their interests. Um, so these are what the jury will use when we when we evaluate the applications um, and ultimately uh, put forward our recommendations to um, to Art Windsor Essex for the artists in residence. Um, and so, of course, uh, no need to memorize everything on the page or even write down what you see. The video will be available online, um, but just in full transparency, giving you a sense of the rubric that we're using for judging. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, like I said uh, earlier, keep it short, 150 to 250 words is, is quite a bit. Keep it simple. We try to write at a grade eight reading level here. So if you can try for the same thing, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and like I said, bullet points are just fine. Uh, and keep it straightforward. Tell us your ideas. Think of it as an elevator pitch. We've got 90 seconds on the elevator and you've got to fascinate us and excite us uh, from floor one to floor three. Um, and just remember, I think as well, that we are keen to be excited. We're so looking forward to being surprised by all of the applications that we receive. And so don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. And um, yeah, we're just so, so excited to see the applications as they come in. Mm -hmm. And I'll mention it here as well. Um, if this is your first time writing an application, there are some really great resources right here in Windsor, Essex, um, notably the Arts Council Windsor and Region. If you are a member of this organization and ask for help, they will help you. They have wonderful staff um, who are ready to help you uh, write grants and write applications for residency. If you need maybe a little bit more help to develop an idea or um, simplify an idea for clarity to make sure that your ideas are coming across, um, I suggest uh, looking into the Arts Council Windsor and Region. They're a fantastic resource right here in Windsor, Essex um, that are ready to help you. And of course, if you have any other questions or need clarifications, um, I can definitely share my email in the chat with everyone. Um, but I'll, for now, I'll stop sharing my screen so I can see everyone, because I think this was the last slide on, mm -hmm. our, on our presentation. So I don't know if Emily or Nicole, if there's anything that you've thought of. Um, or anything for folks to keep in mind. Um, for those who are watching, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box or in the chat box. I think you should have access to the chat uh, in this webinar. We'd be more than happy to answer them as well. Um, I guess I should just point out that if, if there is anyone who does um, a digital or, or video art, um, that the galleries really could be well suited for that as well. We haven't had a video, I mean, we've relatively new, you know, we've only been open for about a little over, almost two years, a little over a year, almost two years. Um, but uh, we haven't had video in the space yet, but it really would be well suited for that, um, depending how you would display it, it because of the sun, um, you know, video and projection doesn't show up so well during the day, but it really, shows up wonderfully at night. And, and so if, you know, one of the last uh, exhibitions that we had in the space used um, 
a projector to show a, a series of images and um, it was set up like a beautiful installation on it in its own right during the day but then at night the projection came on and um, it was a really really interesting um, show so um, I just want to throw that out there that it works it works for um, video depending how you set it up or different types of film um, projection artworks as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, you made an excellent point, um, Nicole, when you were chatting about um, the space itself uh, and the quality of light that changes over the course of a day. I mean, of course, that also happens over the course of the year. So the second exhibition um, is in the fall into the winter. And so that's definitely something to think about, too. Um, Sophie, I loved that you mentioned that it was fall for uh, Michael's because it it felt so fallish uh, with the skeletons and the and the dried up leaves. So uh, something to think about um, if you are if you are thinking about when which of the two uh, residency periods you're interested in seasons seasonality is 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 real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will. Um, I'll just type my email into the chat. <laughs> box as well in case anyone has specific questions about the gallery I'm happy to chat about it absolutely and um on our website as well on the application page um I can drop that link as well but we do have some floor plans um available of the space of the dry goods gallery so if you're interested in you know the specifics or the nitty-gritty of the space they are made available online um, on Art Windsor Essex's uh, uh, website. So I can definitely chop, uh, put that in the chat as well. I'll just find the link for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are definitely helpful because there is a sort of narrow um, entrance into the into the gallery. So something to consider when it um, when it I comes to it. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> about yeah, but such a fantastic space. And Nicole, we're so grateful that you're partnering with us a second year on this. We, um, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I guess we should mention too and acknowledge our sponsors uh, for this year as well. <laughs> um, we really want to thank uh, RBC. Um, for supporting this Emerging Artist in Residence program, as well as Nicole and the team at Dry Goods Gallery uh, for supporting our artists um, and really activating the studio space, activating our communities with new ideas, with new ways of thinking about art and new ways of making art as well. Um, so thank you, RBC, and thank you, Dry Goods Gallery, for, for supporting this program. Yes, we're very, we're very grateful to you both. Mm -hmm. So I'm not seeing too many um, questions in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, so everyone has our emails. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Uh, we love questions. Um, and yeah, we're, we're here to help you to the absolute best application you can. Um, so thank you so much. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, again, don't have, as Emily said, as we all said, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, applications are due on Thursday, May 18th. You can apply online using a Google form. Um, of course, if you need help to apply or if you would like to present your application verbally, over the phone or in person, uh, don't hesitate to um, reach out. That's definitely something that can be arranged. We wanna make sure that this program is as accessible as possible to a wide variety of folks um, in Windsor, Essex. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out if uh, you need some help applying. But with that said, thank you, Emily. And thank you, Nicole. Thank you everyone who tuned in and who is watching after the fact. Um, and thank you again to RBC and thank you to the Dry Goods Gallery as well. Um, we'll let everyone go. Um, thank you, Nicole, for being with us this evening. And thank you, Emily, for leading. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Looking forward to seeing the applications. Excellent. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good night, everyone. Bye.